Happy Tuesday, everybody, and welcome to Undisputed Live from Los Angeles. I'm Jen Hale, here with Skip Bayless, Shannon mm. Sharp. Good morning, mm. gentlemen. Number two, join the Lakers yet? Oh, uh, there you go. go. I don't let know. it go. Why? You should let it go. No, why should not? Mm -hmm. It's time to move on, Skip. Yeah, He's good. finally recovered. Yeah, no, I, I don't, I don't <laughs> wallow in my pity and talk about, oh, he quit on us and he yeah, did we'll Let it go. We'll see how this first <laughs> question goes. It's all going to get rehashed very quickly. All right. Yes, indeed. This morning, we are beginning with the newest star in L.A., who I certainly shook the NBA world when he chose to sign with the Clippers instead of Shannon's Lakers or the Raptors. The claw already led Toronto to their first NBA title, and now he has the chance to do the same thing for the Clippers. Meanwhile, that other LA team and LeBron missed out on convincing Kawhi to become a Laker, which may have hurt the Kings' chances for a fourth title. The Athletics' Frank Isola wrote this about Kawhi. He's already a two-time NBA Finals MVP who knew that going to the Lakers and winning with the purple and gold would have enhanced LeBron's legacy more than anything. Imagine winning a title with the Clippers while preventing LeBron from getting another ring. That would place Kawhi in a different stratosphere. This move was about Kawhi's legacy and plotting his own future. Mm. Mm. Interesting argument, well, Shannon. That's debatable. How will Kawhi and LeBron's legacies both be impacted by his decision to join the Clippers? LeBron's legacy will be unimpacted. Mm. You can't do undo what's already been done. Mm. How do you take those four regular season MVPs, those three mm. uh, finals MVPs? He's a top five in scoring. Mm. He's going to be top, possibly top five in assists. I don't believe Kawhi's decision impacts Braun in any way. Mm. Now, can Kawhi enhance his own legacy? Sure he can. I don't know how much about winning titles without having regular season MVPs on that resume because it's hard for me to believe, Skip, a, a player can be a considered a pantheon great without having a regular season. Mm -hmm. See, it's easy for me, and, I, and I'm not saying it's easier, but to win finals MVP is over seven games. Win the regular season MVP is over the entirety of a season. Mm. And Kawhi does not have any on his resume. Now, he and Magic Johnson are the only two guys to have multiple finals MVPs before they won their first regular season MVP. Now, we know Magic went on to win three of those. We have yet, we don't know if Kawhi will or won't, but I'm saying he doesn't have any of those, Skip. I don't get, see, and everybody keeps saying LeBron's legacy is, takes a hit because Kawhi turns him down. Does Kawhi's legacy take a hit because KD turned him down? Does his legacy take a hit because Ky Kyrie turned him down? Hmm. Does it? Because they did turn him down, right? They told him no. Yeah. Is it my turn? No, it's oh, not your turn. Yeah, I'm just saying. I'm, I'm ready. I, I'm just, yeah. I'm just throwing, <laughs> give you a little food for thought. Oh. They make it seem like Kawhi joined a 25-win team. Did the Clippers make the playoffs? Yeah. Oh, okay, they did. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you a question. Now, LeBron goes to the Lakers last year. They were a 35-win team, and he brought no one with him. Kawhi joins a 48-win team, and uh, by the way, I'm heading to L.A. Pa Paul George. Holla at your boy. Mm. So he gets Paul George, and we're like, oh, my God, did you see what Kawhi did? Mm. Did you see what Paul George did? Now, I know a guy that would have done that move and everybody would have obliterated him, but we're not talking about mm. that right now. We talk well, are we putting number two and LeBron in the whoa, same whoa, sense? Whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't know. You've been trying to... echelon? I don't hold know. Hold on. You keep talking about their legacy. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's compared. I don't even think it's I, I haven't said a word about it. Well, you shouldn't legacy. say a word. Yeah, let, let, I haven't yeah. spoken yeah, yet. Yeah, let, let the king <laughs> yeah. speak let right the king now. Speak? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, Skip, look. Not that Kawhi... It would have been very, very interesting because everybody said, well, he didn't want to join the Lakers. It would have been very, very interesting if Sam Preston said, heck no, Jerry West. Heck no, Lawrence Frank. Mm -hmm. I'm not dealing you, Paul George. Could have. And if you, beside your jury would have said, nah, I'm good over here. I'm not dealing with y'all. What would Kawhi have done? Mm. It would have been very, very interesting with this skip because he showed if he wanted the Clippers so bad, Fringe they opened up on 630, June 30th. He could have signed with the Clippers from out the gate. Why didn't he? Mm. Why didn't he do that, Skip? Because he wanted to take somebody along with him. Free agency opened first day last year. Who was one of the first guys to ink a contract? Mm. LeBron James. And took no one. LeBron James... He's he semi-retired. I mean, oh, he so you said, see, I want to go to see, Hollywood. Now he's semi-retired. He tries to get... He gets Anthony Davis. Mm. He tries to recruit 
uh, Kawhi. Oh, he weak. He mm. weak. I thought he was retired. Mm. How can you be retired and weak? Mm. Oh, you mm. see? Mm. I see how you do this old Skip Bayless. Mm. Oh, but you Tell me when it's my It's not your turn yeah. just yet. But I will say this, Skip. I just believe there's nothing Kawhi can do to catch LeBron James. Mm. Because LeBron, he's top five. He's not coming out. Kawhi is trying to get into the top ten. Mm. And that's going to be very difficult for him mm. without any regular season MVPs mm. on his resume. I think it's my turn. It's your turn now. Finally. We're eight minutes into the show. <laughs> yeah, <we. laughs> what amuses me about everything you just said is just a couple of days ago, just back to Friday, yeah. Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday, you were number two's biggest supporter. I still you, am. Oh, are you? Yes. Oh, really? I no problem. I, no, 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 no. I didn't. No, I didn't. Mm. I just said that his legacy, LeBron's legacy is unimpacted mm. by anything that Kawhi does. That's it. Mm. So before I get to the guts of my answer, I must admit, I love the decision number two made because I can't not love it. I challenged him all week last week to have the guts to compete against LeBron. Don't join him. Fight him. Come to his town and fight him face to face in his own building. Share the building and fight him. Mm -hmm. That was my theme all last week. And by golly, he did it. So and he, he did bring along some it's oh, a yeah. big help, but, yeah. but he did it. He chose to go face-to-face -face with LeBron at Staples Center. So to me, I got to applaud that move because I, I have mixed emotions here. I, I have no choice but to applaud that because that did take some measure of guts, even though he did holla at his boy and his boy came. Yeah. Okay? But I, I got that. But you can't blame him for that because that's the way the... The game is played now. Everybody does. It. Oh, but no, no, because no. there are no more Michael Jordans. But, there was one and one only, and he's now running Charlotte. It, barely into the ground. Yeah. I might into add. The ground, yeah. <laughs> but hold on, Skip. What, why aren't you offering the critique of the criticism of him getting another great player to come along? Because that's what you did with LeBron. Yeah, yeah but but he's he's shaky. He he's not a closer. <laughs> he he needs help. He knows he needs help. He knows full well because he's a shrewd operator, as we've been finding out. Yeah, a lot shrewder than we gave him credit he for. He knew just how lucky he was last year in Toronto because every break in the world went his way. Literally the, and figuratively. That's correct. <laughs> The basketball god said, let there be championship, and it was. Yeah. So, so he knows, boy, if you're going to go back to the West, he knows the West because he played in the West for mm -hmm. a long time. But he had, he had some help. Yes. He had Duncan Parker and Ginobili. Mm -hmm. And so now he's saying, I want to go to the Clippers and share that building with that guy. I need help. Okay. Kevin, come help me. No, sorry, I'm standing in New York. Jimmy Butler, come. No, I'm going to Miami. Kyrie. Uh, me and KD, we're, we're just, we're like this, man. Right. We, we got to do this with the Nets. Right. And it comes down to he's begging. He's he's going over to Paul George's house to beg him. So he Please begging, come huh? with it. Well, yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I'm giving you that. Because, Isn't that a knock? That's yeah. a knock. I mean, okay. begging is so unbecoming. Okay. All right. Ooh. But guess what happened? <laughs> very, very late Friday night and early Saturday morning in the East, because it was almost 2 o'clock in the morning on the East Coast. Number two dropped a stealth bomb that changed NBA history in my estimation because it effectively ended LeBron's championship possibilities. LeBron James is not going to win another championship without number two, period, end of story. So you give me that kind of credit. Then. Yes, I do, because it, it would have taken the Clippers completely out of the equation. They would have not been a contender without him because he brought Paul George. So that wouldn't have happened. So right. the, the, the Clippers are still flailing. They would have scrambled just like the Lakers just did and tried to sign this guy and that guy and this guy, and it all adds up to whatever because you still don't have a star except you got Montrez and Lou Williams, and that's it, right? Okay. Correct. So you take them out of the equation. But more important, what did you talk about? Why were you about to throw a parade last week because on hair trigger was the potential to have LeBron James and Anthony Davis and number two all in purple and gold. Yes. And they become maybe the most prohibitive favorite in the history of the NBA going into the season, I right? Agree. Yes. And I gave it up to you. I said, yeah, they might win a couple of, heck, they might win three, let's say three of the next four championships, depending how long LeBron can hang in there and hang on at his age. But, but again, up to 38, yeah, maybe maybe they could win three more championships. What if LeBron went from three and six, which he is right now, to six and six? 
What if LeBron could say, I won as many championships as Michael Jordan won, and I doubled him in finals appearances. I got 12, and he had only six. Yeah, but, you go, but then you and the other Jordan apologists will say, yeah, but Michael was six for six, six finals okay, MVP. Okay, obviously, I would cling to that, and I would fight for that, because that's six and zero. But it would give you so much more ammunition than you have right now at three and six. I got enough ammo. No, I you don't. I got a plenty of ammo. You don't. It, it's not you got credible. Got 50,000 rounds. It's not credible ammo. Yes, it is. Not like this. So you had it, and you knew it. It's, it's right it. there. It's like within your grasp. Did LeBron